What is going on, Ive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about a new study that shows that intermittent fasting may actually help with fatty liver disease, and specifically non alcoholic fatty liver disease, as you do have to make that separation because you can be someone who drinks a lot of alcohol and that causes your fatty liver disease in and of itself. But non alcoholic fatty liver disease is something that can come about from poor metabolic health. I'm going to go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Now, this is a study that was done in China. It was a randomized controlled trial looking at three groups, an alternate day fasting group, a time restricted feeding group, and a control group that did not use any intermittent fasting protocol so that they can see if there was a difference. Now, this study was published December 18th, 2019. So it's a recent study published in the BMC gastroenterology website and the study was run by Hoi Kai and colleagues. So what was found in this study? They looked at two different intermittent fasting protocols as well as looking at a control group and what they saw were significant benefits for the alternate day fasting group and the time restricted feeding group versus the group that was just a control group. Now just keep in mind that they ate at libitum so they weren't controlling for calories or they didn't tell them to do anything specific when it came to calorie consumption so please keep that limitation in mind because it wasn't controlling for the calories itself however they were measuring the calories that they were eating fat mass was reduced significantly in the alternate day fasting group and the time restricted feeding group versus the control group for the four week period and the 12 week period. So keep in mind, there were two points in which technically three points in which they looked at results. It was before the study started during a four week period and then during a 12 week period. So after four weeks, they checked their results. And then after 12 weeks, they once again checked their results. Adherence was actually very high in both the alternate day fasting and time restricted feeding group with it being slightly higher in the time restricted feeding group. What else did they see? Total cholesterol was reduced significantly in the alternate day fasting group and the time restricted feeding group versus the control group. Serum triglycerides were reduced significantly with the ADF group and the TRF group. Things that they saw that had no significant difference in this particular study. Blood pressure, HDL, LDL, fat free mass, which will incorporate things like muscle tissue. Those things did not show any significant difference between the three groups. 271 people participated in the study and the way that they broke it down was 97 in the TRF group, 95 in the ADF group, and 71 in the control group. Now these health markers that I just indicated that were seen in a significant fashion with the ADF and TRF group were very important because that actually helps elicit the proper response for fighting non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Because non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is frequently associated with high triglycerides, low HDL, high LDL, and levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Although HDL and LDL wasn't affected, serum triglycerides were significantly reduced and that was beneficial towards combating the uh, fatty liver disease and also the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Those things were improved as well with the ADF and TRF group. So those are markers that are associated with fatty liver disease and then we have these protocols that are helping reduce that so it can help get you to the point where you're fighting it and trying to even reverse it. And it was a broad age group as well, 18 to 65 year old. So this is an interesting study. Of course, this is a springboard study because we have to continue to look at if intermittent fasting can definitely assist you with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because we have to look at other things. There are limitations in this study, even within the methodology. For example, they did not do a crossover design where they took these groups put them in the specific control ADF or TRF. And then once that whole period is done, do a washout period, wait a few weeks, then now put them each in a different group to see what happens to them. And if they're affected the same way the previous groups were affected to see if there is a correlation that makes it a little bit stronger, a little bit more powerful. And of course the ad libitum design where they allow you to eat as much as you want or as little as you want, it's up to you. That brings 
and inconsistency. Also in this particular study, it was self-reporting where they self-reported what they were eating, which makes it a little bit more inaccurate in terms of how much they actually took in or how much they didn't take in. Of course, you cannot always use a metabolic ward study where you're you have these people locked in these metabolic chambers for so long because it's so depriving of someone to have them just basically in jail just to ensure adherence at 100%. So it makes it incredibly expensive and just incredibly difficult to get participants for things like that. This is why sometimes a lot of people go to animal studies because of that control, that 100% control to the adherence of what the animal is eating and how much they're eating. But nonetheless, it's still a springboard because it shows that there are correlations with intermittent fasting in terms of ADF and TRF that can elicit health markers that can help with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It was a decent amount of time as well, although it wasn't super long term, it was still 12 weeks, which is pretty decent. So it was a pretty interesting study. And of course, I'll have the link down below for you to take a look at it for yourself. And of course, as always, guys, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here. And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!